Elliott Hall as state-of-the-art training ground for the journalists of tomorrow at the heart of Hong Kong University. Usually these pathways are a hive of student activity, your archetypal backdrop to college education. But like many other campuses across the globe, the last few months have seen it empty as students take their lectures, their tutorials, even their exams online. From fall, the university plans to resume teaching with social distancing, small group classes, half capacity lectures, and an increased move toward online learning. I sat down with the director of their journalism faculty, Keith Richberg, to find out how they're coping with the digital transition. How prepared were you, fellow educators, and your students to make this leap into online education? Oh, well, we weren't prepared at all. You know, we know, this is something that we had been talking about for probably years, at least since I've been here, that we needed to be more online. We needed to kind of take advantage of these online tools to do a bit more. The pandemic actually gave us a bit of a kick in the pants to say, look, let's hurry up and do that. And so with pretty much no advance notice, we had to become YouTube stars. I've started to experiment with a lot more use of videos. Um, there's a lot of video materials out there. Uh, that we can use, and uh, I've been taking a lot more. I've been taking a lot more time going through and figuring out what's there, yeah. and actually using some of these. Even if the students return to campus in the fall, you're not going to go back to normal, are you? This hybrid model uh, does work, and I think we're going to incorporate a lot more of this online learning. Even if we go back completely normal and have all the students back here, as I hope uh, September 1, I think we're going to spend this summer putting a lot more things online than we'd ever planned yeah. and you, you know, using this technology to our advantage. While educators like Keith look to adapt to this hybrid future, for others, the digital infrastructure was already in place before this pandemic. I spoke to three experts in the field of ed tech and remote learning to see how this industry has been waiting on the periphery of the higher education scene and to ask if this moment could lead to a sea change in the way students learn. There's been an incredible uh, amount of innovation that's gone into the drive to remote learning over the last few months. It has been incredible. But there is a difference between that kind of teaching, remote teaching, and what we're trying to deliver through our MOOCs and the online learning that we provide at FutureLearn. MOOCs are massive open online courses. They rose to prominence in 2012 as a way for students to gain micro qualifications from some of the world's top universities via online platforms like FutureLearn, edX, and Coursera. It's like watching a play by video conference compared to a well-produced movie from Hollywood. And what we're really doing here is producing content in a very careful way for asynchronous consumption. Disruptive innovation starts typically at a place sort of below the incumbent industry that it comes to disrupt. So at some point, we got better and better and better. The improvement curve just, you know, was very steep. How prepared do you think most educational institutions were for the pandemic and this sudden massive shift to online learning? Well, I mean, I don't think anyone was prepared for COVID and no one expected something like this. Yeah. I think there was a rush to Zoom, but in the long term, we know that we could do a lot better. And so we will use simulations, we'll use virtual reality, we'll use, you know, you can explore a historical world. Maybe you can go to ancient Greece and see Socrates speak. There's a fair bit of research that suggests that hybrid models of education that harness digital technologies where they're most powerful, but retain human interactions where they're most meaningful. So powerful and meaningful is the, is the right combination. When students return to campus, what are they going to do? What are professors going to do? Simply do what they did on Zoom? Or will they really celebrate this precious proximity that they've regained? I really hope it is the latter. You, know, you talk about this precious proximity and you know, there are certain subjects that require that. There is something to be said for a student doing something in a lab and a, an expert standing and looking over their shoulder and saying, do it this way or you know, try this other thing or a, a dance performance. You know, it's very hard to recreate all that. Of course, we will get better, but, you know, there's something about the magic of being on campus. It's very hard to recreate. The resources needed for scientists, architects, and engineers cannot be easily replicated digitally. But the students at the Dyson School of Design Engineering have set up an innovative project using Autodesk's Fusion 360 software. Using the iPhone app Scandi Pro, they have asked me to make a 3D scan of my face for a creative design tool that will produce custom-fitted ventilator masks. 
From Hong Kong, I will send my 3D face scan to PhD student Xia Li at home in Singapore. She's studying at the Dyson School of Design Engineering at Imperial College London and will render my custom face mask using software created by Californian tech company Autodesk. So we've seen a big increase of demand on the software from both the commercial side, where people are using these cloud-enabled tools to collaborate now that they're kind of in dispersed work locations, but on the education side even more so. And I actually think that this cohort of students is kind of proving how work-ready they are for this new, new normal for the future of work. I think that's really important. You are leading the Customizable Mass Project. How did this come about and what inspired it? We got talking about uh, ventilator masks. And we were kind of blown away by just how many people need these masks. The problem lies in the mass production of these one-size-fits-all masks. According to one study in China, 97% of healthcare workers have experienced skin damage as a result of ill-fitting PPE during the pandemic. So I was eager to see how this new custom design would work. This is a software available free for educational use, and we use this to create our uh, script to create the um, CAD model of the mask. And basically, uh, the process starts with we extracting the topographical data uh, from your facial scan, and now it just automatically runs and create a mask. This part that will be in uh, direct contact with your face is customized. It sounds complex, but the whole thing actually takes uh, about a minute. What? So, <laughs> yes. A minute? Shia, yeah, this is amazing. We've never met. I never had to put any sort of, you know, plaster or mold on my face, but just through using my smartphone and a 3D scan app, I send yeah. you data and you're able to create a completely customizable mask that would fit my face perfectly. Anybody can go online, become a participant in the study. Essentially all that, that involves is they would take a, a scan of their face and in that way we can get much broader demographic and I think it's it really is the future that, that things take advantage of how connected and how digital all of these processes can be. Thank you.